Numerical Computation, Chapter 4, Video 1. In this video, we're going to give an introduction to a topic called numerical integration. And we will also look at our first numerical integration rule, the trapezoid rule. So numerical integration in many textbooks is also referred to as numerical calculus because it's talking about integrals. So here is our problem description. We'll be studying the following problem. Given a function f of x, um, defined on an interval from a to b, we want to find an approximation to the integral of this function from a to b. So we will denote this by i f, where i stands for integration. f is the function you'll be integrating. So of course the integral depends also on the interval from a to b, but we assume that is a fixed constant for this problem. I think all of us still remember the definition of the integral from our calculus class. And in fact, the integral is defined as the limit of the Riemann sum. So what is the Riemann sum? The Riemann sum is obtained by cutting up the interval from A to B into many small subintervals, and on each subinterval, we simply approximate the function f of x by a constant function, and then we add up the area of many, many of these skinny rectangles, and then in the limit, we let the interval length go to zero, and that's the integral. So before we let the interval length go to zero, and what we have would be an approximation to the integral. And our actual numerical integration rules, the main idea behind it is actually pretty similar to the Riemann sum. So to start with, we would cut the interval AB into many smaller subintervals, just as we did in Riemann sum. And then on each subinterval, we would approximate the function f by some polynomial, and let's denote it as pi for the ith interval. And the degree of this polynomial pi here is another thing that we can choose and decide. And then the integral of fx on this little sub-interval is now approximated by integrating the polynomial pi on this sub-interval. And then we will add up all these little pieces of integrals to have the integral from A to B, the whole big integral. So as we said, the degree of these um, polynomials, pi, is something we can choose and depend on what we need. So it's pretty clear from the error estimates of polynomial interpolation, we see that if we put in a lower degree of polynomial, then the algorithm in the end would be a bit simpler, but you probably get not such a higher order method. And on the other hand, if you put in a higher order polynomial, somewhat higher, then it will be more accurate. But then at the same time, your algorithm will be more complicated and uh, the computational time would also be longer. So one has to analyze it and probably find a balance. And the lowest order method would actually be the Riemann sum that we're familiar with. That is, each pi is a polynomial of degree zero, which is a constant, okay? And assuming that we are familiar with that, and now let's take a look at um, pi of higher polynomials starting from polynomial of degree one. So this is called the trapezoid rule, and let's look at it. So let's first define the grid. Okay. So the interval a, b is cut into n subintervals, and we denoted the grid points as x0, x1, x2, all the way to xn. x0 is a, xn is b, and in between these are sorted, so xi is less than xi plus 1. On the interval number i, from xi to xi plus 1, we would approximate f by a linear polynomial, which we call pi. And the polynomial has to satisfy the following property, that is, it interpolates the function f at the two end point, 
to add xi as well as at xi plus 1. So in the end, this actually results in a piecewise affined interpolation of f. It's actually a linear spline. So here's a geographic um, interpretation. Let's say the interval from xi to xi plus 1 is here, and the function f takes the value here and takes the value here. So this curved line is my function f. And how do I compute the integral from xi to xi plus 1 of my function f? Well, what I do is I approximate this with just a straight line that connecting these two points on this interval. So the integral of fx on this interval is approximated by the integral of pi on this interval, and in which we know that the integral equals to the area beneath the graph. So in this case, we need to figure out the area of this, um, I'm shading it, this shaded area, which we see is a trapezoid. So um, we all remember how to find the area of the trapezoid, right? We don't even need to write out the exact expression for the polynomial pi and integrate it. We don't need to do that. We just need to find the area. So this will be the length here, which is f of xi plus the length of here, which is f of xi plus 1, and divided by 2. And then that number will be multiplied by the height, which is the width of this strip, that is xi plus 1 minus xi. Okay, so plug all that in, um, the integral of pi on that integral from xi to xi plus 1 now simply equals to this expression. And that's exactly the area of a trapezium. And then the integral of f over xi to xi plus 1 is now approximated by the integral of pi, okay? um, which we know is that, coming from previous computation. And then the whole integral from a to b of my function f is now um, the sum over each interval and integrating f over each inter interval. So from xi to xi plus 1 integrating and summing them up i from 0 to n minus 1. And then um, since we approximate f with pi on the interval i, so this sum is approximated by summing over pi. Okay, so putting in the expression of the integral of pi over there, we get this expression. So this, um, in the end, is actually a, a general kind of a formula for um, trapezoid rule with just a generic grid. So let me try to block this. So this is the generic formula. That is the trapezoid rule. Okay, of course, for um, special choices of grids, this might take a different form. So next, we'll look at something called a uniform grid. Okay. We shall be familiar with uniform grid already. We encountered it earlier. So that means that we cut the interval a, b, e to n equal subintervals, right? So each interval will have a length h, which is b minus a over n and the two neighboring grid points xi plus 1 minus xi equals to h for all i's. Then the integral, f again, from a to b of fx, we would uh, um, use the trapezoid rule approximated, and then in the trapezoid rule, the part xi plus 1 minus xi will simply equal to h, and that's the where the h is. So it's h over 2 times f at xi plus f at xi plus 1. So first we see that h over 2 is a constant. So we can actually take it outside the summation sign. So it just stands here. And then we'll be just summing over the sum of these two apps with different x index. What I do now is I would like to write out all the terms in this summation sign. So let's first look at i equals to 0. Then I get f at x 0 plus f at x 1. And then let's increase the i to i equals to 1. And this is what I get, f of x1 plus f of x2. And then you keep doing that until you go to the last turn, 
and this is the term that i equals to n minus 1. So we make this observation that um, many, many terms actually, say term f of x1 is actually computed twice. So here we are thinking of um, computational efficiency, um, saving CPU time. So if we code the algorithm following this formula, say throw in a for loop for this summation, and then we notice that f evaluated at x1 is computed twice. First when i equals to 0, the second when i equals to 1. Now remember we talked about how computer evaluates functions, say sine of x or cosine of x or e to the x. It actually takes a lot of time for a computer to evaluate a function. So in this algorithm, we shall be um, kind of a CPU savvy sensitive. We should be aware of what is expensive to compute and what is not. So all these summations, multiplications, they take no time to compute. But the function evaluation, say this thing here, takes a long time, and so does this thing. So the moral will be, you will try to minimize function evaluation. You will try to do that as few times as possible. So we see that the two terms here, you will be better off by evaluating it once and multiply by two, and also this x2, there will be one term here that will be the same, and also this term f x and minus 1, it will appear twice. So the only two terms that does not appear twice is the x0, f of x0, and f of xn. Okay? And all the inner grid points f evaluate at them shall be multiplied by a factor of 2. Okay, summarizing all that, we see that this expression now simply equals to this one. So f x0, f1 is once, and all the um, inner grid they're multiplied by 2. So I can just sum them all up and multiply the sum by 2 to minimize computation. And then I also can distribute the half into it and cancel this 2 with a half. So I have h times a half of f x0 plus f x n, that whole thing is half, and plus and simply summing up all the f's at the in the points. And now I would like to introduce a notation. So this computation, this algorithm, this rule as we call it, it's called the trapezoid rule. So I would denote it by T, stands for trapezoid, of the function f, f is the input here, with the grid size h. Okay, so T bracket f comma h, that's the trapezoid rule for f with grid size h. Okay, so in the next video we will take some example and see um, how this trapezoid rule really works.